What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome to the Keep It Techie channel where we dive into Linux, open source tools, and getting you into the tech field. And today we're covering an important tool for anyone looking to get serious about Linux performance tuning and testing. And that's an application called Sysbench. Now Sysbench is a lightweight command line benchmarking tool that allows you to test your CPU memory, file IO, and even databases. And if you want to understand what your hardware is truly capable of under load, this is where you start. All right, let's jump in. So what is Sysbench and why is it important for Linux users? Well, let me answer that. I'm over here at the Sysbench GitHub page. You guys can check this out. I'll have the link down in the description of the video. But essentially, Sysbench is a command line tool designed to run multiple performance tests on Linux systems. This tool allows you to test how your CPU handles prime number calculation, also how your memory performs under load and how fast your file system can write and read data. It's a very simple tool, but it gives us deep insight into how our systems are performing. So think of Sysbench as your go-to tool for understanding your system strengths and weaknesses. And one thing I know is a lot of people that are into Linux gaming use this script to test out their system and see if it's capable of running specific games that they want to. Now you might be asking, why do I need to benchmark my system? My Linux box runs fine. Well, in a production environment, you need to know if your server can handle heavy loads before you actually throw things at them. Imagine hosting a web server or a database with multiple users connecting simultaneously. If you haven't tested the limits of your system, you can run into bottlenecks that slow everything down or worse, crash the system. And so that's where Sysbench actually steps in. It helps you identify those weak points before they become an issue. And the best part, Sysbench is versatile. It works across all major Linux distributions. Like you can see on the GitHub page, it's been around for a very long time. And you can install it on Ubuntu, CentOS, Fedora. But let's not just talk about it. Let's dive into some examples. Examples. Hey y'all, Josh here from Keep It Techie. Real quick, let's talk about Rocky Linux. This distro is the real deal if you're looking for a solid, enterprise ready Linux solution. It all started after Red Hat dropped CentOS, and Gregory Kurtzer, the OG co founder of CentOS, brought us Rocky Linux as a tribute to his late friend, Rocky McGough. This is community driven, open source software at its finest, and it's already making waves. Rocky Linux 8.10 is out now giving you that enterprise grade stability without all the Red Hat licensing headaches. So whether you're running a home lab or a full on data center, Rocky's got your back. So if you want to keep it open source and keep your data secure, check out Rocky Linux. The link's down in the description of the video. It's built by the community for the community and it's here to stay. Stay techy, y'all. I'm usually showing you guys command line utilities within a server, but I'll show you guys on a desktop environment. And this is elementary OS. And this is what I consider one of those entry level distributions that's super simple to use for new people that are interested in trying out the Linux operating system. Now I'm going to walk you through four essential benchmarks that will test your system CPU, memory, and file IO. And this section is the bread and butter of Sysbench because these are the components that are often hit the heaviest workloads on any server or machine. So let's start with a basic CPU benchmark and let's open up our terminal and then I'll also zoom in so you guys can see it a little better. But the first thing we need to do is just make sure that Sysbench is installed. It's not installed on most systems by default, but it is in those repositories. So let's go down and install our FSS type sudo apps install and then Sysbench. And it's all one word, press enter. I know it's available on Debian systems and my script will install it for you guys. So if you check that out on my GitHub, you'll be able to get a copy of the script that can install it for you. And then you can also go through and run examples that I'm gonna show you guys. And so one of the first things I do whenever I install a command line utility is show you guys the man page for it. There is a man page for Sysbench. So this will give you just some more information so you can understand how to use the application so type man and then sysbench the name of the application press enter it'll open it up for you it says a benchmark tool for database systems and so you can check it out it gives you a lot of information in the description one cool part about it that 
I mentioned a little bit, but you can check my SQL as well as Postgres SQL using this as well. But I know a lot of people that use this tool, they're mainly just trying to see if they can run pretty decent games on their system. And like I said earlier, I want to start off with a basic CPU benchmark. And this test basically measures how well your CPU handles prime number calculations, which is a great way to gauge its raw computation power. So let's run a command right fast. So it's sys bench. And then we can go tac tac test. And then what we want to test is our CPU. So we want to put equals in CPU and then hit run. Now this is running in the virtual machine. So probably not going to get that great of numbers, but just wanted to at least show you guys how to run it, but it's best to run it directly on your hardware. Now you're probably wondering what are we looking for in results? First, you'll probably notice the time taken to complete the test and the number of events to process. So as you can see, that's what this is. This is our time and this is our events. Now, essentially this shows how fast your CPU is at processing these calculations. And if you want to push your CPU even harder, you can increase the maximum prime numbers to calculate. Let me show you guys that right fast. So I'll just press up arrow so you guys can see, but let's go test CPU. And then right in here, we want to add CPU max. So CPU tech max and you can up it up so prime and then let's go equals 15,000 so let's try that and then run at the end of it and this will run it with the max so let's go down and press enter and just wait for it to finish now the results will tell you how much time the CPU takes under heavy loads as well as the latency which is right here this goes through the latency and then the fairness between threads so you can check that out and essentially what this means is lower latency and higher events per second means better performance and when you're managing servers or running applications that require a lot of processing power this test becomes really useful you want to make sure your cpu can handle multiple tasks at once without creating performance bottlenecks all right and next up i want to show you guys some memory tests that we can run and we all know memory is critical on any computing environment especially when you're running virtual machines databases or even heavy applications and one thing i should have did was ran this directly on my proxmox server so you could check out the numbers for that system because right now it's just using i believe this system is only using like two threads and like eight gigs of memory that's assigned to it from my virtual machine and i'll be doing this maxing it out but memory bottlenecks are often the cause of sluggish performance so it's key to know how your system handles different workloads so let's start with a basic memory test and it's essentially the same as with our cpu when we first did it all we had to do is specify the memory so equals memory and then we can run so sysbench test memory run press enter they'll go through and test our memory and this command will run a default test where it writes data to the memory in 1k blocks but let's say you want to push things a little further maybe you want to test larger data sets like bigger files you can increase the memory block size to one megabytes and you can also total the data written to let's say eight gigs and so this will kind of max out my virtual machine so we'll see what actually happens and let's just press the up arrow and let's add this in here so let's set the memory block size so set and then memory block size and then equals let's go one megabytes and then also let's do a total memory and this may fail i'm not 100 sure because this system only has eight gigs so we're going to just run it up and see what happens so let's go size equals eight gigs and then hit run press enter and so what this does is it simulates more intensive memory workload which as you can see it kind of ran super fast but this gives you a better understanding of how your system will perform in high memory scenarios and you'll see metrics just like before with the total operations performed and the amount of data transferred in megabytes as you can see it's eight gigs so it's interesting to see and the takeaway like high memory operations per second and higher megabyte transfers are what you want and the more data your system can handle the better it is for memory intensive tasks like running a database or let's say virtual machines or even like hosting containers all right so now we're getting into the file io benchmarking which is super important if you're running databases media servers or any service that reads and writes data frequently and one thing i did was check for this on my plex server 
because there's a lot of reads and also writes, especially if you have a lot of people using your server, let's say files are deleted, you know, reading of the actual movie files, transcoding, all that stuff. We'll start with a sequential. And this test writes data in a continuous stream, which is useful for seeing how your system handles large files. Now, I'm gonna just stick to one gig or let's do five gigs. That'll work. But let's type syspinch and then and then a tag tag test. And what we want to test is our file IO. And then let's type tag tag the file size. You want to specify the total size of the file. So let me show you guys how to do that. And let's go size and then you specify what it is. So I'm gonna do five gigs. That should be good. Like I said, this is a virtual machine, not much space on this server or this system. So we want to kind of keep it small, at least for what I'm doing. So let's tag tag file, tag test, and then tag mode. And we're going to use that sequential mode. So S E Q, right? And then we're going to do run and let's go down and press enter and run through and do that for us in that sequential order and boom so this command generates large files and writes to it sequentially or it's actually a total of five gigs and it writes to it sequentially and the results will show you how fast your system can write files under optimal conditions and you don't need to pay attention to the megabytes written per second you definitely want to pay attention to that and also the number of operations per second and one thing to note here is that sequential write tests are great for environment where large files are regularly moved, like in video editing or database dumps. But what if you're more concerned with random access, like how your database handles small queries? Well, that brings us to the next example, which is random reads. And so let me show you guys how to do that right fast. Let's press the up arrow right fast. And one thing we're going to do is do a cleanup first. So let's run cleanup press enter that'll remove any test files because that's what it does it creates test files on the system now let's go down and run it again but we're going to use uh random and actually i forgot with random we have to prepare the system so let's prepare this will basically generate a bunch of files for us so we can run our tests so it'll create a bunch of files that equal five gigs and so as you can see it'll create 128 files so let's just wait for that to finish all right so as you can see it finished preparing the system now let's go down and run our random so let's press up arrow again and it's the only thing we have to do is change our file test mode we want that five gigs the same and then we want to run that so let's go on press enter and this will run that again for us but it's using the five gigabytes of space or files that we generated and this will test our random read so as you can see you can check that out right there you'll see the read through throughput file operations so our throughputs the read megabytes per second six thousand so you want to pay attention to that number total time as well this test will simulate random read operations. The key metrics here is the IOPS, which is input and output operations per second. Higher input output operations per second means your system can handle more simultaneous read operations, which is essential for database performance. If your input output operations per second is low, you might want to consider upgrading to SSD or optimizing your system or file system. Now, when running these tests, keep in mind the size of the file you're working with, the more operations per second your system can handle, the better it will perform under heavy workloads like database queries and web server file requests. Now, like I mentioned earlier, if you're not trying to run these tests manually every single time, I've got a script for you and it's in my Linux server arsenal. Like I've put together a script that automates these tests for you. And let me switch back over to the browser so I can show it to you right fast. But if you click in here, let's search for another repo. Let's go keep it techie and press enter. And it'll take you to my page. You can check this out. This will kind of help you. And we scroll and let's go to my repositories, the Linux server arsenal. And if we go in here under assets, there is a benchmark.sha file. So I'm going to just clone this whole repository down. All right. And actually, let's switch back over to our virtual machine and open up the browser. I keep forgetting this is not a server. So we can go into here, click web, and let's search for it. And let's search, keep it techie. 
GitHub. And this will allow us to copy the uh, repository real quick by just opening it up over here. All right, so let's go down to that and we can click here, boom. And let's go back down to the bottom and let's use a git clone, it should be installed. And if it's not installed, we need to install a git clone or git, yeah, we need to install a git clone. So let's uh, type sudo apps install git, press enter. All right, cool, so we can clear and just type git clone and then let's paste that link in there and that'll clone our repository down and it'll put it in your home directory if you ls your home directory you'll see the and i said it's running clean up i don't like that that's too much let's go back up here and you want to clean this up just make sure you clean this up because otherwise it'll be taking up space that's five gigabytes of space being taken up by that so let's run the cleanup and that's one thing that's included in my script it'll clean up the actual files for us okay all right so let's cd into our linux server arsenal directory and let's go to actually it's under assets boom and then let's go chmod plus because i know it's not uh executable but we're gonna make it executable so chmod plus x and then benchmark the shard that'll make it executable for us. And now all we have to do is run it. So you put the period, then the four slash, and then benchmark shaw. We can go down and press enter. And we'll run through and run all those actual commands that I showed you guys in this video. And what the script will do, actually, it will make sure that the system has sysbench on it. And if it doesn't, it will install it. And it works on the major distros that are out there. So Debian base, the Red Hat base, or Sino and Fedora and all that stuff. So what I consider like the big three of distributions. Oh, and Orch as well. It will install on systems as well. And then you can scroll through and look at all the commands. What it does, it will create all those files again. I think it does a one gig. I have it set to one gig, but you can go in and modify the script, obviously. And it will run through all those sysbench commands. And you can look through and check your system off of just one script being ran. So super cool. And it says, yeah, run script on Debian, Red Hat, CentOS, and Orch. So it will install based on the distro you're in. And just switch back over to the browser right fast. You can click in here. It's open source, obviously, so you can read everything is it's gonna do. So it'll go through and install and then run those benchmarks. All right, so that's it for today's deep dive into Sysbench for Linux performance testing. I basically walked you through how to benchmark your CPU, memory, and file IO. And we even looked at how to automate the whole process with a script that you guys can take full advantage of. Just go on download that directory or repository on whatever operating system you're using or Linux system, Linux distro that you're using. And you should be able to get it installed and run these benchmarking tools on your system. Now, as always, if you find this video helpful, Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more content. I'm dropping videos all the time to help you level up your tech game, so don't miss out. And hey, if you have any questions or run into any issues with Sysbench, well, don't drop a comment down below. I'm always happy to help. Until next time, hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, keep it techy. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you got to figure out what you like or what you're interested in because yeah, a lot of people get into the, you know, tech field because you can make a good amount of money. The money is the motivator. But you also, in my opinion, in order for you to be happy, you got to like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so, like for me, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work, bro. Most times it really doesn't feel like work. It's, it's yeah, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing something I love to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it, you know, great for me.